Bonus locked on Jayhawks. You know that means something big happened, and it did. Kevin McCuller is coming back for his really sixth year of college, second year at the University of Kansas. Big time get. Bonus episode. Let's discuss today. You are locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get any of your podcasts. You can find us, like, subscribe to the show on our YouTube page. Also, and this is a bonus episode. We actually came out with earlier today uh, a deep dive, some some deep dives this week on Kaluma and Phillips in case those were guys that KU was going to go after. Well, doesn't seem like that's a need anymore because Kansas landed Kevin McCuller. He becomes really the first real small forward on the roster. I guess Jamari McDowell, but I don't know how much he was expected to play in year one for KU. He gives you options at the three and four. He gives you more veteran presence. Just a big deal for KU to get McCuller coming back. And this is a good surprise, a genuine good surprise from the KU side of things. Um, this, to me, feels like the opposite of McKenzie and Baco. Like the McKenzie and Baco thing, was a surprise almost, I think, to a lot of people, including myself, that he didn't end up picking Kansas. Kevin McCuller, a positive surprise, I think, to a lot of people, including myself, that he's ending up coming back to the University of Kansas. It seemed like he wanted to stay in the draft. Now, then again, we've seen this before. Yudoka Azubuke wanted to stay in the draft his junior year, but he was injured. He couldn't participate in the drills, and he had to come back. Jalen Wilson, you know, Ochai Baji might have wanted to stay in the draft after his junior year, but then something switched with him late in the process. Same with Jalen Wilson last year um, in the process. And then just kind of, you know, maybe you go through the drills. Maybe you don't get all the feedback you would have wanted. Then you get a very convincing Bill Self talking about coming back and being the leader on the team. And nowadays, how much NIL money you can get, all this stuff. And all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, maybe I could come back. And so I don't know how it all works, but I'm sure for McCuller, he's, you know, ready to just kind of move on and be like, I just want to play basketball. I don't want to play basketball and go to school anymore. I've already done this for five years. I don't know how that works with grad graduate players. Like, is it something where, um, cause I, I think there are certain NCAA stipulations and rules about how many, uh, credit hours you have to be taking per semester. Is it the same for graduates? Can you just enroll him in like a bowling class or something? I don't know. Well, however that works, but this is a genuinely, good thing of shocking news for KU this offseason as a whole has been bananas and one of the greats there have been a lot of great Bill Self off seasons there's a reason we call him Spring Bill this one might take the cake I mean it, it kind of depends right we kind of look back at these things with uh, hindsight 2020 goggles because um, you know if they come out this season and they end up with the three seed and you lose in the second round. We're not going to look back on it and be like, man, remember that off season, right? But we look back on things with that hindsight where if this team does make a final four, um, we will look at it that way. But at least just on paper, at least on paper, when you're living that specific off season in the moment, this is about as big, if not bigger than any off season that Bill Self has put together, Kansas, which is certainly saying something. Self was able to convince him whatever way it took. Uh, he was at the NBA Combine, as Adam Zagoria said, for Jalen Wilson. You know, I, I think there were probably other reasons to be there, and this was clearly one of them. Let's get more into uh, Kevin Kohler, his side of things, and how does it affect KU in this short edition of Locked on Jayhawks. First, though, this episode of the show is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are super comfortable. They fit super well, and they are ultra versatile so you're talking about having kind of a, a stretchy uh waistband where you know maybe you have too many beers maybe you have a little too much to eat and you're not gonna you know feel like all of a sudden it's it's tightening down on you a little bit it's gonna give you comfort there because of that but they're also it's the material they're made with it almost feels like you're wearing gym shorts except you're not they look like nicer shorts on the outside to where you know you can wear them going to hang out with friends you can wear them you know, if you're you're going to a, a, a dinner date with your girlfriend or something and it's a little warmer outside and you're going to be sitting outside and you don't want to be wearing pants where you're going to be sweating on your date, right? Boom. Bird dogs are 
perfect for, and you know, I, I just warm a bunch over the weekend going out to the lake. It's, it's perfect for a bunch of different activities. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on college locked on college. They'll throw in a free custom bird dogs, Yeti style tumbler with every order that's locked on college at birddogs.com slash locked on college. So more on Kohler specifically, I think this is an interesting thing for Kevin. I think wanted to be in the NBA. Um, and from his standpoint, you know, I, I have heard some people that have said, well, I don't know if it's worth the risk of him coming back and what more does he have to prove? I kind of disagree with that, to be completely honest. And I kind of have the whole way through um, that. It's not that I don't disagree that there isn't risk involved with coming back to school for another year. And then all of a sudden now you're 24 years old entering the NBA, which that can hurt you a little bit more. And if the three point shooting doesn't come around anymore and he does have any more injuries, which he certainly suffered a, a, a fair deal amount, especially of ankle injuries over his college career, then yes, that can hurt his NBA stock because now you're a year older and now you have another year where those things didn't improve or NBA teams are like, OK, it does look like it's kind of just becoming a, a flat thing as opposed to an improving arrow going up. Right. So if he shoots 30 percent, it hurts you a little bit more. The flip side, though, we have seen. Older guys, Derek. Right. We we saw um, Thomas Duarte, who was like 24, 25 years old from Oregon, be a lottery pick. Um, so if if you're good enough, at some point it's just not going to matter. And so I think the the risk here, there is a positive amount here for Kevin. If Kevin comes back, let's say KU has the the great season you're expecting them to, they make a Final Four, and Kevin shoots 35 percent from three. Now all of a sudden. If you're an NBA team, you're salivating at that because you know what Kevin brings from an IQ perspective, from a uh, extra ball handler, from a defensive perspective, from an uh, a, a you know basketball acumen perspective. But you're just looking for the shot, and if he has that one season of shooting 35, 36 percent from three, like I don't think that's crazy that he could be a late first round pick. I really don't. So I, I do think there was real reward here, but it is taking a risk on yourself from that standpoint. But obviously, he's going to make a real good amount of money off NIL, probably more than he would make off a two-year deal. Now he's got the chance to be a leader on this great team. He's got um, NBA chance coming down to that kind of three ball. And I think beyond that, he becomes more of a fan favorite. I think Kevin already became kind of a fan favorite in year one. But one worry I had because of how KU lost, falling in the first weekend of the NCAA tournament where it wasn't as memorable of a run, I was hoping that last year, like that Kevin McCuller wasn't going to be somebody who was more of a forgotten player, right? Like in, you know, 10 years, uh, when I'm asking trivia questions on Rock Chalk Sports Talk trivia, like would Kevin McCuller not be as remembered as a name? Well, now this pretty much guarantees that he's going to be remembered more. He'll have that extra year. Uh, he gets to add to his legacy at Kansas uh, and certainly becomes a very important player for how he affects KU in adding that one last kind of piece that they were looking for in the rotation. Let's finish up there. How does it affect KU with Locked On Jayhawks? So I think, um, obviously, from the KU perspective, they were looking with two scholarships open. Who knows if they will fill both? They still have one scholarship open left that they could if they wanted to, but they at least needed one more player, and they needed it to be an impact-level player. And when I said impact-level player, I meant a couple things. It could be a starter. It could be somebody who plays off the bench, but gives you a solid 20, 25 minutes a game, but is consistently in the rotation. Well, with Kevin, you, you know he's going to be a starter, so clearly he's going to be an impact player and play lots of minutes. And that was so important to fill out this rotation because you already kind of had, like you look at the the four guards that you have with Dewan Harris, Marco Jackson, Arterio Morris, and Nick Timberlake. Okay, those are four guys who should be in the rotation. You look at the center position, Hunter Dickinson, and then you got KJ Adams is kind of a four five hybrid, should be in the rotation. That gives you six players that you feel comfortable as being part of the rotation. Um, and then it's like, well, Parker Brown, maybe he works in, in the rotation if you're playing another center that game. Or Marcus Adams could be in the rotation as a backup four. Um, you know, Jamari McDowell, does he have a spot because he's small forward? I don't know, with Chris Johnson, whatever. But basically, that gave you a spot where it's like, well, you need kind of one more rotation player. And ideally, it could be somebody who plays the three or the four because you don't really have that on the roster. You don't really have a, a small forward who was somebody who you viewed as being one of those impact players. And now Kevin McCuller comes in and it helps you out in a couple ways. It gives you that three man if you want to play with couple wings out there next to two you know smaller guards it gives you the opportunity to play small ball you can play kevin at the four and if marcus adams isn't ready you have more coverage 
at the four position there. You just have more coverage at a lot of the different positions now, which is so important. The big question is going to become, will he start at the three or will he start at the four? And I don't know how much it's going to matter at the end of the day, to be honest, because I think even if he starts at the four and KJ's coming off the bench, KJ's probably playing 20 plus minutes per game. If he starts at the three and KJ starting at the four, you know, whoever that bumps out, they're probably still playing a good amount. I, I think no matter what, you're going to play a good amount. Um, I guess my early guess would be that he starts at the three, KJ starts at the four, but I wouldn't be shocked if at some point over the course of the season, Bill Self, you know, gets to a point where he's like, well, we need more floor spacing out there. We're going to start sliding Kevin to the four, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I just feel like at the beginning of the season, like game one, usually it's the guys he trusts the most. And so that would make a lot of sense. But as far as team impact in, in the skill level, the, the level of play and everything, uh, certainly there will be questions about the, the team three point shooting, right? If you do start a lineup of Dewan Harris at the one, Kevin McCuller at the three, KJ Adams at the four and Hunter Dickinson at the five, you know, is your two man Nick Timberlake? Is it not? Are you going to have enough shooting even if Timberlake is out there? Um, those will be questions, but this insulates the defense even more. Like you thought that the floor of the defense would still be be good because you have Bill Self, you have Dewan Harris, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, like El Marco Jackson, Arteria Morris, good ball pressures and, and should be good defenders from the guard position. Um, KJ Adams, good defender. Hunter Dickinson, at the very least, is a good, you know, rim protector and one-on-one -on -one defender in the post to where you had enough there. Now this further insulates the defense. It protects some of those other guys. It me makes it so that your floor, your defense raises even more. The ceiling of your defense raises even more. Um, you have more experience in the Bill Self system. You have at least inside scoring and cutting ability and more transition game. It adds a lot to your team that was already uh, in contention with the preseason number one, I think now it's probably preseason number one with a bullet. All right, that'll do it for this bonus episode of Locked on Jayhawks. We'll talk plenty more, go deeper into Kevin McCullough returning on tomorrow's episode. We'll also uh, get into who does it impact most on the team outside of specifically, and does this cement KU as the preseason number one team? All those coming uh, in our upcoming episodes with Locked on Jayhawks. This has been LOJ. You can find us wherever you get any of your podcasts or subscribe to us on YouTube. Have a good one. See you next.